Hi, this is a tutorial for week one, assignment three in Illustrator. We're going to be doing um, five rows using the same color, starting each square at a pure, fully saturated, fully bright U. And that's the only way we're going to get accurate results. So first thing I want to show you is um, where to find uh, the uh, HSB slider. Sometimes when you automatically open Illustrator, the default setting is this mode and you can't see the HSB sliders. If you click on this little tiny arrow next to these lines, show options, and that will re reveal uh, the um, HSB sliders. And I'm going to switch to HSB. So I was in RGB. I'm switching to use saturation and brightness. That way I can control uh, the pure saturation of the color. I don't want to select any of these swatches because they may be tints, tones, or shades. So um, I'm going to select a color, oh, blah, 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 red, why not? But that one happens to be maximum saturation and brightness. If we reduce the saturation, that's like adding white paint to the mix, and that changes the color. It, it, it produces a tint. If I use the color even with a little bit of white in the mix and try to make shades, I'm not going to get shades, I'm going to get tones. Or conversely, if for in row one, I had just a little bit of black in the mix, I like to say just a little bit deeper uh, U, deeper value of that color, I won't get tints because adding black and then mixing white, the N square, we're going to end in white, mixing white into the mix will produce tones because black and white mixed into a color produce is like mixing gray into a color producing tones. So we have to make sure that the color is at maximum saturation all the way down. So we're going to select that and make sure my saturation and brightness is all the way up at 100%. Do the same thing for every single one of these squares all the way down. Select it and adjust the sliders. And you know, sometimes the color looks like it just changes a little bit automatically. Why it does that in Illustrator, I don't know, but I'm gonna just double check. You see this number changed a little bit as I was adjusting it. Uh, but once I get it all set, um, we're good to go. Okay, so next thing I want to do is I'm going to be ending row one in white. So we're going to have 100% brightness, and so there's no gray or, or black in the mix, and uh, zero saturation, so it's pure white for the first um, row and square. The second row and square, I'm going to kind of do the opposite, where we don't have any saturation or brightness so we get pure black so it's basically at zero and zero and on uh, the third row we want to have a, a light gray so we don't we don't want any saturation no hint of color in it at all so the saturation is going to be zero and we want a light gray value so we're going to end in that light gray value there and for this row we want to end in a dark gray value so yeah okay that looks pretty good it's I mean it looks black but it's not it's gray it's like a charcoal dark charcoal gray and then for the uh, last one we want to make sure we are at exactly at a middle value of gray you know middle value gray makes a nice um, smooth transition to a constant value and that's going to be the objective for that one so row one tints uh, blending to white First thing we need to do is actually select these uh, squares and eliminate them. We've got to delete them because if we don't, when we go to make a blend, we're going to get a whole series of irregular like lines. So we have to delete them first and then select our uh, two end squares and go to Object, Blend, Blend Options. And we're going to choose eight st specified steps because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares. And that's where we want to be. We don't want to do smooth color or specified distance. We want to do specified steps. Say OK. Then we go to Object, Blend, Make. And notice it has produced a perfect transition of tints ending in white. OK, for row two. Uh, all the way down, we want to eliminate these um, middle uh, squares. So I'm just going to select those carefully and delete it. And if you're not careful, you can actually grab the text or you know one of the end boxes and delete those. You can always go Command Z. If you do that, it'll take you back a step to where you are. Oops, and scrolling is an issue. Okay, suddenly sometimes I've lost my whole design because I scrolled drag my hand across the mouse and it went rolling off into space somewhere. Okay, now 
uh, that can happen. Okay, so now I've, what I want to do is select all, the whole group, and I've already specified eight steps, right? Object, blend, so I don't need to do blend options again because I've already specified the number of steps. I just go make and I've produced perfect shades. Same thing here. Okay, object, blend, make. Perfect transition to lighter tones. You can see the quality of the color is a little bit different in each one. Blend, make. That's because um, various amounts of white only or black only or various levels of gray will produce different quality kinds of color, different uh, tonality. All right, so now we have a perfect, uh, simple uh, assignment, starting with pure saturated U all the way down, ending in white, black, light gray, dark gray, and a middle value gray. And we can select um, these colors and check the value transition. Okay, let's see. Edit, edit colors, and I'm going to convert it to grayscale. And now I can see if I check using my color picker, um, oops, I have to release it first, otherwise I'm going to uh, change them. But notice, you know, the, in, in Illustrator, the color goes from 64 down to 49. Uh, in Photoshop, if I convert the color to grayscale, it will be at exactly 50%. And I always critique in Photoshop, so I recommend uh, always choosing 50% value here. Even though it looks a little bit darker in this one, it you know, Photoshop and Illustrator are calibrated differently, so it's really important to um, be aware of that. And because I'm critiquing in uh, Photoshop, ending in a middle value gray, the red will actually look, you know, registering at 50% calibration in Photoshop when it's converted to grayscale. So it's pretty constant. Um, let me know if you have any questions about that. Let me do Command Z. And uh, let me get back to uh, the color. Where did it go? I have to go back a few steps. All right, there we go. Every every oops. Every time you click on the color, you end up changing it. So you may have to Command Z a bunch of times to get back to where you were if you check your work in Illustrator. Okay. Hope uh, that makes sense. And let me know if you have any questions. And if you do, please post them in Week One Problems and Solutions.